Listen, I'm telling you today what I want to preach on. I want to conclude. I want to preach on part two in the series. Don't leave quietly. Don't leave quietly. Last week, I, I taught you three things about your salvation. Hopefully, you got this and God's still just, uh, you're chewing on the word a little bit. I told you last week the three things about your salvation that your salvation will do for you. Number one, if you have true salvation, it will set you free from your past. How many of y'all are thankful? You say, Brian, listen, I, I'm, I'm still dealing with my past. Watch this. You may be, but he's not. You may be dealing with your past. You may have unforgiveness in your life, but watch this. You are forgiven. Here's what I'm going to beg the church already. I think we should forgive people the way God has forgiven you. If we will forgive people the way God has forgiven us, watch this, it'll be a good church service today. Number two, I told you guys, true salvation will allow you to heal the ones you wounded. How many of y'all know, be honest with me this morning, this is first service, this is right here's the elect. Eight o'clock. For some odd reason, people think at 8 o'clock, God's more spiritual. The, the gurus come out at 8 o'clock. That's what I always heard in my life. But how many of you know that probably in your life you've wounded some people? Come on. All right, let me go a little bit deeper then. How many of you have been wounded? Said, come on, 8 o'clock. I ain't raising my hands. <laughs> we'll get some more today. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Number three, true salvation will fill you with joy. Did y'all hear me? joy i'm talking about it whether you smile or not i am how many of you know some christians don't want you to be happy some people just don't want you to have joy and be happy i hear this all the time well nobody can be that happy if you've got jesus christ as the lord of your life and you're not going to hell you should be the happiest person in the world because you're born again we got all this stuff wrong here on earth well i don't have no money watch this god don't care if you got money or not well, I ain't got a big house. Well, God don't care if you got a big house, a little house, no house. He said, I will put a roof over your head. So watch, we, we got all this wrong. The church has just been, I'm telling you, what God is downloading in my spirit, we have made the Bible all about us. We have made church all about us. If we don't like it, we'll just leave and go to another one. If we don't really like that, we'll start another one. Y'all know I'm preaching truth. What is joy? Jesus over you. That's, that's joy. J-O-Y. Jesus over you. That's joy. If Jesus would be over you, if you would allow Jesus just to consume you, I'm praying for the day, I'm being honest with you, when not one person can walk in this sanctuary that God has broken us so deeply that all we can do is fall on our face and cry out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm talking about a broken, you say, well, I'll never get on my knees. Oh, you will one day, sir. Yep. Now, I'd rather get on my knees right here than make him, bow. I have to bow down up there. Because when, listen to me, you're free to bow down here. Watch this. One day, every knee will bow, and one, and one day, every tongue will confess that he is God. See, when Jesus is over you, you will heal people around you. How many of you know that? Watch this. If Jesus is over you, you will not be concerned about hurting people. Watch this. How many of you have you ever heard this before? Boy, I got them good. That is not Jesus. That is not Jesus. Well, I got that last word. Boy, I made them suffer. That is not Jesus. Jesus is about restoring people. Jesus is about blessing people. Watch this. You should leave more blessed going out than you did when you first came in. That's Jesus. That's what you'll say. Amen? Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Acts chapter 16 real quick. God downloaded a word in me, and I told you in Acts 16, I've always talked about the jail cell, and about the, the earthquake, and the jail cells coming open, and Paul and Silas, and boy, it's one of them hoorah sermons. Boy, you can make people really shout on, on Acts 16. But I've seen some things in Acts 16 that I've never seen before, and I want to download them. I want to give them to you guys this morning. Is that okay if I just real briefly give them to you? Acts 16, verse 35 through 37. I'm reading out the NIV this morning. Acts 16, verse 35 through 37. The Bible says, I love this. I'm ready for a good word. I need this. When it was daylight, and notice it said when it was daylight. We, we just read that. Well, it was daylight. You know why? 
because it finally got there. Here's what happened. They praised him all through the night. Well, I, I give God an hour on Sunday. Y'all didn't hear what I said. They praised him all through. They, listen, they had one hand uh, in chains. The other chain was to the wall. They had leg, leggings on. They had, they had one leg tied to a chain and to the wall, and they were still praising God. And they just didn't praise for five minutes saying blessed assurance three times, and that was it. They praised God all through the night. And the Bible says, I love this, when it was daylight, the manager sent for the officers of the jailer with an order. Listen to what happened. He says, release those men. Release those men. The jailer told Paul, the magistrates have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now, can you leave? And watch this. By the way, go in peace. But Paul said to the officers, I love this, I love Paul. Paul's not a sissy, watch this. He said, they beat us publicly. Without a trial, they stripped us publicly. And even though we were Roman citizens, we were citizens of this, of this place. And they threw us into prison, and now they want to get rid of us quietly? <laughs> I love this. He said, I love this. And Paul says, uh-uh, I don't think so. He says, you go tell them themselves to escort us out. I like this. This is so good. Because, see, this is not called sissy Christianity. This is called a bold faith in the last hour that the church must have. This is so, he says, uh-uh, listen to me very carefully. Listen, I want you to turn your neighbor and I want you to testify to them really quick. Don't leave quietly. Come on. Y'all got to help me with this one, all right? Because, listen, loud, the louder y'all get... The faster I'll go. Y'all ready? All right? Y'all hoop and holler on that one. Don't leave quietly. Tell somebody else, don't leave quietly. Don't leave quietly. Don't leave quietly. Paul and Silas, he said these words. I love this, man. Listen to this. He says, you, you stripped us publicly. You beat us publicly. You made fun of us publicly. You embarrassed us and threw us into prison publicly. And now you want us to be quiet? And leave peacefully. And I love this. Paul stood up. He threw his shoulders back. And he said, I don't think so. He had a Clint Eastwood look on him. Y'all help me. He had a, he had a John Wayne. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't think so. He had a look on him. He says, we're not going anywhere quietly and I today I, I just prophesy that over the churches again in this last hour the devil wants us to be quiet and back down not get excited don't preach too loud don't talk don't don't, don't talk about anything that's going to offend somebody you guys be quiet sit there and be a good little Christian and just mind your own business and everything will be okay but that ain't what Paul said hallelujah Paul said I don't think so Listen, I can see Paul saying this now. Do you believe this magistrate? Do you believe he, he has the gall? After what all God has done for me and you in prison, they beat us publicly, they stripped us publicly, they put us in a pen, in a jail cell, they chained us up, and all of a sudden we started singing and praising God and praying unto God, and the wind started blowing and the earth started shaking, hello, and the jail cells come open and people started getting saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, and now they want me to be quiet? Uh. <laughs> they want us to be quiet about it? See, I truly believe, I want y'all to hang with me just for a moment. I really believe that this is an analogy between the world and the church today. I really do. I believe this is an analogy of what God is saying in this time. In the 21st century church, this is an analogy between the world and the church. I'm going to tell you all something really quick. And I, I know that I, I get happy about God. I, I sure do. I, I get excited about God. I, I sure do, sir. I, I just, I can't get over God. Oh, you're right, ma'am, I can't. But Jesus Christ did not die on a cross for a church just to sit back, be still, be quiet, fit in, just sit back, tiptoe around, and say, no, 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 we can't say this or we can't do that. Maybe that's what's wrong with the world today, that the church has not stood up on her feet and said, no, God said no, and that's what it means. 
See, the, the world is telling the church is just to shut up. Get in your place. <laughs> stay in your four little walls right here, Elkhorn. Stay, just stay in here. Y'all do what you want to do in here. <laughs> Be quiet. Don't share Jesus with anyone. Don't witness. Stay out of the government. We've been lied to. Where in the Bible does it say, well, the, the, the church and the government shouldn't work together? For God's sake, God established the government built, built, built upon Christian values. I'm going somewhere. And it's, just be quiet. Don't witness. Just be quiet. Stay still. Don't make any noise. My God, don't do that. Just be the little church. Stay in your four walls. Be quiet. Don't say nothing now. For God's sake, don't do that. Just be quiet. Here's the truth this morning. Y'all ready? Because I'm going to shoot you with some truth because the truth will stand no matter what you think, no matter how you act or react. These are some factual truth. Listen to me. The devil is on the loose. The devil is on the rampage. He's killing. He's stealing. He's destroying. Teenage pregnancy is at an all-time high. There's been more drug overdoses in the last year than there has in the last 10 years combined. The jails are full, and there's at least two murders per week at the west end of Louisville, Kentucky. And the world is telling the church just to calm down, be still, don't say nothing now. It's okay, preacher. It's going to be all right. Just don't get in the world's business. Just stay still. And see, if you read your Bible, see, I've never seen it like this, Greg. But if you read the Bible and you study the Bible, you read the Bible till the Bible reads you. You study the Bible till the Bible can study you. And when God starts downloading his spirit into you, there is a revelational word in every verse of the Bible. If you're waiting for the pastor to, fo to, to spoon feed you, you're going you're to starve to death. It's got to be a consistent time with God every day of your life. Hallelujah. The world's telling the church, calm down, be still, shut up, stay in your four walls. It's none of your business what the government's doing. It's none of your business how the state is, is running in the local city. It's, it's, it's none of our business. That is a lie from the pits of hell. It is time for the church to stand up and not sit down. It is time for the church to speak up and not quieten down. It is time to take the devil by the throat, throw him down, put your foot on his throat and say, Devil, I put you under my authority. Oh, hallelujah. Church, I got some good news for you this morning. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. Hallelujah. Yesterday, today, and forevermore. I'm going to say it one more time until you get it. He's the same yesterday. In other words, if he done it for Abraham, he'll do it for you. Today. Listen to me. You don't hear sermons preach like this, but I'm going to tell you the truth. I need the Holy Spirit to work in my life. The Bible says in John 15, verses 1 through 5, you can't do anything without Him. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is the answer. Listen to me. This world, it's not going to fix people. Lord God knows that. Psychiatrists, I love them. Counselors, I love them. But they can't fix what's going on in you. There's only one man. His name is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is the answer for our government. He is the answer for your children. He is the answer for you. He is the answer for Elkhorn. Jesus Christ is the answer. See, I can see Acts 16 on churches today. Listen to me very carefully. Hear my heart. I see this chapter, Acts 16, on churches today. You can have church, but just preach quietly. <laughs> Don't witness. Lord, the, the pulpits have become more politically correct than preaching the Word of God. 
Y'all know I'm te- preaching truth. Lord, don't preach anything controversial at church. Lord, don't preach on sex now. Listen, I've had more people get mad at me at this church because I, I say the word sex. Now, Brian, that's rated R. Yeah, that's why teenagers today are pregnant outside of marriage. And if somebody won't stand up and say, God loves you, but that is wrong. There's a right way, and it's called a ring on your finger. If you've got a ring on your finger, you can do whatever you want to do. But until you get the ring on the finger, it is sex outside the marriage, and it's wrong. Oh, come on, first service. Oh, come on, first service. Y'all know. See, sometimes it's like you said, Elkhorn, shh. Now that right there, preacher, is going to get you in trouble. Shh. Lord, don't, don't preach. Don't preach about adultery. Don't preach about abortion. No, there's only been 7.2 million babies die since 1971, and you're telling me to shh. And I buried a precious child yesterday, and you're telling me to shh. It's time that the church hears sermons like this. It's time that the church gets the fear of hallelujah of God back in her. That sin is sin, wrong is wrong, right is right. And it's time that we hear the truth for God's sake. Who would ever think you'd got to, you have to go to church to say having sex outside of marriage is wrong? And you have a man in my office with his wife there who has committed adultery five times. And he sat there and said, there's nothing wrong with it. She didn't say it was wrong. You say, Brian, you're, you're crazy. No, I'm telling y'all. There is no fear of God back in the churches no more. There's not. My God, if we knew that God was honest to God, coming back today, the altars would be filled up. But if we found out he was not coming back, we would act... Trying God. Lord, don't talk about that preacher. Shh. Shh. Y'all just be good. It's okay to come to church, but don't get too happy. It's okay to get a little excited. I don't mind you clapping your hands, but when you start doing this, shh. Shh. I know the Bible talks about tongues. At a Baptist church. Shh. I run into this all the time. Let me, let me ask you. It's so funny. I got asked to do a, a small breakout session until they found out that I believed in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, I, God must have changed his mind. When, I, when they called me, though, Madonna, they said, Brian, God laid your name on my heart to come do a breakout session. But they found out that I believe in all the Bible and I don't get to pick and choose the verses that fit me well and the ones that don't fit me well. And they said, well, I heard that Elkhorns, they just believe in the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, you don't? Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit. Yes, we believe in God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. Yes, we believe that Peter walked on water. Yes, we believe in tongues. Yes, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yes, we believe. Yes, we believe. Watch this. We don't have a choice. Woo! I know it's tough. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. But listen, church, we're not supposed to leave quiet. Watch this. And God still speaks. He sure does. You know, ask me how you know, preacher. I just talked with him. My sheep know my voice. And they follow me. How do you know where to go if you're not hearing? Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we're hearing from man and not the man. I'm just saying. See, God, he got me this week. See, there's two types of people in the church. There's always two types. Y'all listen to this. Those who say, just sit down, calm down, be quiet, be still. Don't make too much noise. And there's type two people that say, turn it up, let go, and let Jesus. Always two types. I, I run into them every day. 
See, that's what the enemy wants to do to the church. Y'all realize that. Listen to me. Just calm down. Here's what the enemy wants. Elkhorn, just calm down. Be still. Shut up. Be quiet. Don't make any noise, for God's sake. And I hear the enemy. I wrote this down. I'm going to ask y'all this morning. Because I heard the enemy this week. I did. I heard him just watch this. How many of you know the enemy's got a voice too? Here's the sad part about it is most people can hear the enemy's voice better than they can hear God's voice. Yeah, it's right. Most people can hear the enemy speak louder than they can the voice of God. Hey, the enemy's saying, I can hear the enemy saying, come on, Elkhorn. You really believe the Bible? Come on, Elkhorn. You actually believe in a man named Jesus Christ? You believe that? You, you actually believe that, that he was born from a virgin? Now listen, a virgin? Come on, listen. To me, that right there, that, that right there is the trump card. I've never seen a virgin have a baby. And we're fighting over tongues and a virgin had a baby. Y'all believe that? A virgin named Mary had, had a, a baby named Jesus Christ in, in, in Bethlehem? Y'all believe that? Y'all really believe that he died and he was buried and he rose on the third day? And y'all believe, believe he's coming back again? Then be quiet about it. <laughs> that's, Ginger, that's what he's saying. In Acts 16, he said, after everything that God, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost on this one, has done for you, he saved your soul from going to a burning place called hell? Shh. He, he redeemed your spirit. He sets you free. You're not on drugs like you used to be on drugs. You're not the alcoholic that you once was. You're not the dealer that you once was. Y'all believe in Jesus Christ? No, do y'all believe in Jesus Christ? Then just be quiet about it. Just know y'all clapping too loud. You really got to be quiet about it. Because listen, if the church would get excited about a risen Savior that is not in a dead... Mm -mm. We got to believe this church. That's what the enemy wants. And I'm just learning this stuff. I'm just learning. Man, listen. That magistrate went to them. He said, listen, get them out of town. Get them out of town. Dude, they're praying and jail cells are coming open. Shh. We've got to calm them down. Wouldn't that be so great if the magistrate come and said, Elkhorn's got to leave. <laughs> oh, oh, I hope this. Oh, oh she's got to leave. She is starting to pray. Mm, mm, mm. And the winds of heaven are starting to blow. And things that were locked up, hallelujah, are breaking loose. And the Spirit of God is on the rampage. And people from the hospital are coming to the church. And they're being set free, healed, and delivered. If the devil can quieten the church... He'll next, he'll be the pastor of the church. As a, somebody write that down because I got to get that second service. If the devil can quieten the church down, the next thing you know, he'll be the pastor of the church. And I'm afraid in the pulpits of America, I'm going to say something going to mess people up. I think the devil and his angels are behind more pulpits than you think and you realize. They'll preach a sweet word. They'll tell you that all sin is equal. It is not. It is not. Read your Bibles. I'm messing y'all up, aren't I? And they'll, they'll tell you, as long as you said the prayer, but you don't have to have no fruit, no evidence of God working in your life. Remember, you're saved. But they live like the devil, they act like the devil, they talk like the devil, they walk like the devil. Listen, 
If you've got God in you, he'll eventually come through you. I believe, I believe, listen to me, I believe in eternal security of the believer. I do. If you're truly, truly saved. If you're truly saved. If you're truly saved. My question to you this morning. <laughs> there's three blessings that need to come on the end time church. Listen to me. We are the end time church. Praise team, you guys come. We are the end time church. We are. If you read your Bible, you might as well in Revelation chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 3 and the church of Elkhorn, you might as well put her name in Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Because in Revelation chapter 4 verse 1, the Bible says, and they were caught up. In other words, the rapture takes place. So listen to me. We are the end time church. Number one, the three blessings that need to come on the end time church. Number one, we're not supposed to leave quietly. Take a note. You are not, watch this, you are not to be an introverted Christian. You are not, you are not to sit there and go, well, I'm saved and that's all that matters. No, let me ask you something, sir. That person sitting beside you, are they going to heaven or are they going to hell? Our job, listen to me, our job as a church will not be complete, will not be done until the horn sounds. When the horn sounds, watch them mess y'all up. Our job is not even done then. It's not, it's not done even then. You're not supposed to leave quiet. And watch this, I hear this all the time. Well, I've, I've done my part. I, I've, heard, I've heard people say, well, I've done my part at Elkhorn. Oh, really? People are still lost, dying, and going to hell, and you've done your part? I'm preaching better than y'all are acting. Number two, we're not supposed to leave weak. We're not supposed to leave a sissy, weak, undone, busted, and disgusted church. God says my church is strong. My church is a mighty weapon of praise. If my people would unify themselves and come together as a mighty force, we would be a force to be reckoned with. You're strong in this house today. And lastly, we're not supposed to leave defeated. Y'all hear me? You're not defeated. You're still breathing, right? I mean, hoping y'all still breathing. <laughs> if you're breathing... You're going to win. I'm telling you, you're not defeated. Let me, let me break this down to you really quick. Let me wrap this up. I'll leave you with this. Noah made a, a noisy exit. Noah, Noah made, he didn't leave quietly. Y'all remember Noah? Boy, everybody was making fun of him. Y'all remember that, Clayton? You remember that? Everybody's making fun of Noah. But boy, when the, when the door shut and the rain started falling, it wasn't funny no more. And then, y'all watch this. Here's how public God was. The whole world knew it was raining. The whole world knew it was raining. Can y'all imagine them, them people? Open the door! I can just, I, in my mind, I can just see people hanging on to the side of that boat as long as they could trying to pry that door open. Let me tell you another one. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they made a noisy exit. They made, a, they made an exit. They wasn't quiet about it. Y'all remember when King Nebuchadnezzar stood up and he said, everybody bow down. You remember that? There was only three Hebrew boys that said, I am not bowing down to a King Nebuchadnezzar. I'm going to stand in the presence of God. Everybody else bowed down. The three Hebrew boys stood up. They got noticed. See, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. God did not design the church to bow down to the world. He raised us up to make us stand up and say, let me show you my God. Everybody noticed when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego got put in the fiery furnace. Y'all remember that? The whole city came out to watch this one event. But because three teenagers, everybody look, three teenagers, three teenagers! Where is our teenagers today? We need them to stand back up and say, I'm not bowing down to sex and drugs 
I'm not going to bow down in a world that's going to condemn me. God is standing up in me. If I'm the only one that's going to stand up in this hour, I'll be the only Elijah in the house today. But I'm not bowing down to the world. I'm going to stand up for King Jesus. Oh, let me, let me go a little bit deeper. Y'all remember Jesus Christ himself? He didn't leave quietly. Woo. They, they killed him. They put him in a borrowed tomb. And on the third day, he rolled away the stone. And everybody knew about it. Everybody knew about it. Where's Jesus? He's not here. Why do you stand there gazing into the heavens looking for someone who's not here? I'll leave y'all with this. Y'all have time for one more? One more. Just one more. The church, the church is not going to leave quietly. Did y'all hear me? Yeah, listen to me. Here's what the Bible says. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the trump of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised from the dead, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up with God in the air and the clouds. And God says, it's time for the church to make a noise. I'm telling you, everybody is going to know when the church, watch this, this is good. Everybody's going to know when the church is gone. I'm going to ask y'all, so good God, holy, holy, holy. You think the world's going to miss the church? John, the people that you work with, if they're left behind, they're going to say, man, I should have listened to Johnny. See, the, the church is not going to be here, but is the world going to miss us? Or have we been so quiet so long? So quiet. They don't even know we're hungry. That's my concern. That the world won't miss the church. Because the church has been too quiet for too long. And we've allowed the world, the world of King Nebuchadnezzar, saying, if you stand up, I'll put you in jail. But I got a God, hallelujah. If you start praying and you start praising, he'll do a rock and roll concert right there in the jail cell. The doors will come open, hallelujah, and everybody will be set free. I need the church of Jesus Christ to stand to her feet right now. Come on. If you believe what I just preached, we're not going to leave quietly not we're not going to leave quietly everybody the, the world's going to know that the church is gone and I bet the world I want the world to say this my God I wish they were still here here's what I hear a lot you ready Lord I'm glad they're gone I'm just asking y'all this morning Someone once said, if the Lord is in you, listen to this, if the Lord is in you, He will come through you. If the Lord is in Brian Keith Rafferty, and I proclaim Him, and I announce Him today as my Lord and Savior. See, I refuse for just Paul and Silas to have a jailbreak. I refuse for, for Peter to be the only one in Acts chapter 5, verse 15, that his shadow was so powerful, his shadow, it would touch people on the sidewalks, Greg, and they would get up and walk. Shh, don't tell nobody that story now. That messes Baptist up. Shh, y'all just be still. Y'all be the silent Christians of this generation, and nobody won't get mad. Everybody will love you. You'll fit right in. Here's what I've noticed. Y'all ready? If you do anything for God, even the religious people will get mad at you. Even the religious people will get mad at you. Y'all should have seen us Sunday. I'm telling you, you should have seen God. Here we were at First Baptist Church. I finally seen now after almost 10 years being your pastor, a church coming together. And color didn't matter. What size of tracks you was born on didn't matter. I just seen the church coming together. And can I tell you that Sunday we made a noise. We made a noise. 
And it didn't matter where, where you come from or what you looked like or what you was wearing. Listen, we come to the altar. And I seen red and yellow, black and white locking arms. I seen black folk praying over white folk and I seen white folk praying over black folk. Y'all ready? There is no folk when it comes to heaven. And I'm telling y'all in Jesus' name, you know why the world, listen to me, we can shut CNN up. We can put prayer completely back in the school. We can, we can do that. If one woman can take it out, I just wonder, if just us alone right here, if we were to get serious about our salvation and quit allowing the world to shut us up and say, no, 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 God is in me, and if He is in me, He is greater than anything that's coming against me right now, and I am a force to be reckoned with. I will not bow down. I will not shut up. I am not going to be quiet because I am a child of the one true King. Hallelujah. I am a Christian. I am born again. I am on my way to heaven. And just be quiet about it. So if y'all believe what y'all really say y'all believe, shh, don't say nothing now. Just be quiet about it. Just be quiet. So this altar's open. I'm praying for those who, listen to me, who really want to make a noisy exit <laughs> to come down here. I'm talking about you're not going to back down at work. You're not. You're not going to back down because people don't like you. God loves you. So I'm going to ask y'all this morning as a public display of your commitment, of your commitment to Jesus Christ. Well, I ain't getting out of my chair. I'm just telling y'all. If you won't come to an altar, I just wonder how much God can trust you at school. If you won't come to a safe place, a safe place, and come to an altar and let God love on you, I just wonder if you would ever step out in a dangerous place out there. Chances are, if you won't come to a safe place, you'll never go to a dangerous place. Listen, Elkhorn, I love y'all so much. I love Elkhorn Baptist Church. But listen, we got to stand up for what we believe in. The devil hates Elkhorn Baptist Church. She is a mighty force. You know what the pastor said? You know what the pastor said at First Baptist? He says, my God, I couldn't imagine Elkhorn on Sunday morning. That's what he said. So listen, y'all just love on God. Let God love on y'all. Y'all deserve this moment. Let worship just invade you. But don't be quiet. Stand up for what you believe in, sir. Don't back down, ma'am. God, have your way in Jesus' name.